The administration of the Western Cherokee felt very strong about the issue of governance, and in early June 1839, the Western Chiefs called some 6,000 Cherokees together for a three-week convention. They met in the new Katua Council House at Dagadog, north of Tahlequah. The new Western Cherokee Chief, John Brown, graciously welcomed the newcomers. The Cherokee newcomers were told they were welcomed, could vote in future elections, and were even eligible for political office. They presented a list of written resolutions calling for the formation of a new Cherokee nation west of the Mississippi. They suggested the council be made up of an equal number of old settlers and old Cherokee Nation representatives. Brown reminded them that a government already existed. Due to majority and aggression, the old Cherokee Nation moved to eventually coerce some western Cherokees to sign an act of union at Tahlequah, joining the two governments and putting Ross in charge. This was never ratified by the western Cherokees or accepted by the U.S. government. The western Cherokee treaties were not changed. Tolentesky was discontinued as the capital, and for a while the capital was at the council house north of Tahlequah. It was eventually moved to Tahlequah, but for a brief time in the 1860s, it was proposed that the capital move to the town of Katua, located at what is now Fort Gibson. Tolentesky continued to be a meeting place and eventually became the seat of the Cherokee Nation District, Illinois. The Treaty of 1846 forced the two groups to combine until the Civil War. Many of the Western Cherokees saw the approaching Civil War as inevitable and perceived it as a threat to traditional Katua culture. They also acknowledged that the Cherokees were still divided into two main factions, with their faction being the minority. The Katua, as did most full-bloods who did not own slaves, sided with the Union. The Katua adopted a constitution in 1859, calling itself the Katua Society. The original object of the society was to maintain and assert the rights of all Cherokee people under the laws and treaties with the government of the United States. In fact, today it is still asserting those rights as the United Katua Band of Cherokee Indians in Oklahoma. A meeting of the Katua took place April 20, 1858. Bud Gritz was appointed to create a plan that would be best for the Cherokee people and place the Ketuva in charge of the Cherokee government at large. All Cherokee people and all the districts were informed and it was accepted all over by the confidential Ketuva lodges. A formal convention was held the following year and it was adopted on April 29, 1859. In 1900, the Ketuva watched Cherokee Chief Buffington and his delegates in Washington very carefully. Buffington and the delegates were there negotiating issues on the Dodds Commission. The Katua made a statement to the Wagner Record newspaper that was published on April 19, 1900. It said, The full blood Cherokee will never submit to such an agreement, which violates nearly every right held near and dear to a full blood Indian. The Katua had previously sent a statement to Chief Buffington, respectfully asking for inclusion or representation in the delegation. The statement concluded with, We earnestly solicit your consideration of the fact, well known to all of us, that the end of the Cherokee Nation and final division of property close at hand strikes closer and deeper into the hearts and lives of the Ketua or full blood Cherokees than to any other people or class of people on earth. On September 20, 1905, Budna incorporated the Ketua Society under the laws of the United States and secured an official charter. This was an answer to the U.S. government terminating the Cherokee Nation, which was on March 4, 1906, and the Katua wanting to maintain a traditional base of tribal government. After 1906, there was no official Cherokee Nation government, only the Charter Katua Society. Therefore, the Katua continued to hold meetings to elect chiefs and maintain community associations. With the passage of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, and the Oklahoma Indian Welfare Act of 1936, the Ketua began taking measures to organize under the legislation. The Department of the Interior's Office of Indian Affairs stated in 1949 that this provision permits the Ketua Indians to organize apart from the Cherokee Nation as a separate band. W.W. Keeler, the government-appointed chief of the Cherokee Nation appointed by President Harry Truman, stated in a letter to Levi Gritz of the Ketua Society, the more I think of it, the more I am convinced that the Ketua are the proper ones to help the Cherokees. The Ketua people ratified the Constitution, bylaws, and the Federal Corporate Charter on October 3, 1950. The Ketua ownership of all unallotted lands was expressly recognized in the Charter. 
By 1963, the BIA began using the UKB as a conduit for federal funding to the Cherokees, as they were the only Oklahoma Cherokee entity organized according to federal statute. For about five years, the Katua were instrumental in negotiating with the federal government for funding of such projects as the modernization of rural Indian homes, health clinics, the new IHS hospital in Tolico, and the funding of the tribal complex. The United Ketua Band had offices in the tribal complex from the time it was built until 1968. The United States Department of the Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs confirmed in 1993 via a letter to the United Ketua Band that no OIWA or IRA constitution was adopted for or by the Cherokee Nation. The UKB ancestors were part of the historic Cherokee Nation at the time of the Act of April 26, 1906 that dismantled the Cherokee government, allotted portions of the Cherokee lands, and caused the creation of a final role of the Cherokee Nation. Throughout history, the traditional and full-blood Ketua people have followed what they believed to be the proper channels. A treaty was signed. They moved. They set up their government and flourished. The old Cherokee Nation forcibly overthrew the government by a majority in numbers. When the Cherokee Nation government was terminated by the Curtis Act, the Ketua continued on organizing under a federal charter and serving their people.